everyone. I'm Spencer. I'm the Director of Engineering at Reaction Commerce. We're a distributed team building open source commerce technology for retailers and developers. I live in Colorado Springs. I manage and help to build a team of 15 people spread across seven time zones. There's a 10-hour gap on my team alone. So what does a 10-hour gap look like in practice? Well, I have back-to-back one-on-ones on Tuesdays. Maybe you can relate to that. My first one-on-one -on -one is with George. He's based in Ghana. It's his early evening. Immediately following that, I have a one-on-one -on -one with Mia. Mia's based in Los Angeles, and it's her early morning. I want to start with a story about one-on-ones with Mia. One of her first projects had poorly defined deliverables. The general idea was to improve telemetry in one of our products, but the project lacked specific goals. Now, Mia's really good at finding threads to pull on. So she spent some time determining which questions we should be asking, both internally and externally. Then she spent time talking to some of our open source contributors and working to define her team's project better. What she really wanted to be doing, though, was to be writing code and solving problems. Honestly, we were quite premature to put engineers on that project. In our one-on-ones, she helped me to discover several major blockers that weren't being surfaced through our traditional product channels. Without the information that surfaced in our one-on-ones, we would have wasted a lot of time on this project. We would have missed an opportunity to place an outstanding engineer into a different project and a different team where she could succeed. And fast forward to today, and Mia is thriving on a team building infrastructure tools, making our entire engineering organization more productive. I'm not here to convince you that one-on-ones are important. Instead, we're gonna start with the assumption that one-on-ones play a critical role in managing your team. I'm going to focus our time today on giving you tools to get the most out of your distributed team one-on-ones. I'm going to speak from my experience managing a distributed team, but I believe that these same concepts should apply to any team that's not fully co-located. For me, one-on-ones are the most important meeting of my week. I use my one-on-ones as a health check to monitor the pulse of people, projects, and teams. They serve as a proxy for communication methods that are otherwise hidden by remoteness. My one-on-ones are my primary interaction with individuals on my team each week. Some weeks, my one-on-one -on -one may be the only time I have a face-to-face -face interaction with an individual on my team. And because of this, my one-on-one -on -one is often the best, and it's sometimes the only chance that I have to get a sense of how someone is really doing. Now, there's some communication challenges that are very unique to remote teams. And as a leader on a distributed team, it's important for you to understand which communication methods you're going to need to proxy for. Let's start with body language. Body language is an important nonverbal communication method. You're going to have to work hard to get a glimpse of this on a remote team. Impromptu conversations. These are easy to take for granted when you're co-located. Grabbing lunch with somebody, running into them in the office kitchen. These are great places to have a casual conversation that builds relationship. Occasionally, someone on your, meet, on your team may have something they want to talk with you about, but it doesn't warrant interrupting you. This is an easy conversation to have in the kitchen. When you're distributed, it's hard to find an appropriate place to have this conversation. And how do you know if there's tension or conflict building or brewing between people on your team? Which of your teams are high-functioning? Which of them are slowed by interpersonal conflict? When you're co-located, you can get a sense of this by looking around the room. You can observe how people interact at rituals like stand-ups and retros. When you're distributed, the source of these interpersonal issues is a lot more difficult to pinpoint. My goal here today is to give you some practical tools and insights from my one-on-ones that you can start using with your team on Monday. I hope that one-on-ones can become your most important meeting of the week. Let's start with a set of guidelines that I have for my one-on-ones. I share these guidelines with my team during our very first one-on-one, -on -one, and they ensure our time is worthwhile and effective. I'm not going to touch on every guideline here, but I will highlight the guidelines that I believe are most important for distributed teams. But be aware we're going to jump around a little bit. Schedule your one-on-ones weekly instead of bi-weekly or monthly. You're building a relationship. Having a one-on-one -on -one every week is more effective than bi-weekly or monthly, even if, it's for the, even if it's for the same total amount of time. This is especially important when you're on a distributed team. 
You don't have access to the same casual touch points that you do when you're co-located. I run my one-on-ones from a shared document that serves as both the agenda for our one-on-one -on -one and our shared note-taking space. During the week leading up to our one-on-ones, we can have an asynchronous conversation in this document. And during the one-on-one, -on -one, I take notes in the document where both myself and my teammate can see them in real time. My commitment to and my expectation of my team is that we're going to have exactly two windows open during our one-on-one, -on -one, the video and the agenda and notes. It means closing or minimizing all of your other applications, including Slack and email, and turn off your notifications. Those can wait. Meet in a quiet place with your camera on. A loud coffee shop's a fine place to work remotely. It's a poor place to have a video one-on-one. -on -one. You need to be in a place where you're willing to have a difficult conversation. There are visual cues that you can pick up on on a video call that aren't present during a phone call. And while it's not a perfect replacement for being together in person with somebody, it's far, far better than a voice chat. You're going to get a sense of body language, and you can practice active listening so that your teammate can tell that you're paying attention to them. The last guideline I'll highlight here is to start every one-on-one -on -one with a check-in. A check-in is the first item on my one-on-one -on -one agenda, and that's what we're going to talk about next. I structure my one-on-ones into three sections, the check-in, a discussion, and follow-ups. Now, the reason that we check in is to establish context before jumping into work conversations. A good check-in promotes empathy. Checking in well is critical to setting the tone for a remote one-on-one. -on -one. So how can you do this effectively? Personally, I like to have several prompts at my disposal. The goal with these prompts is to provide additional context for the check-in and to get beyond a simple, how are you? Now, my go-to prompt is the traffic light. On a spectrum from exhausted to energetic, how are you feeling? Are you red, yellow, or green? Why are you feeling like that? Now, that being said, some days you just don't fit on a spectrum. So when the traffic light doesn't fit, I'll use a different prompt. Open-ended what prompts, like what's something that you've done recently that you're proud of? What's one interaction that's causing stress for you right now? Fill in the blank prompts can be great as well. What's holding me back right now is, the most important thing that I can finish this week is, and after our check-in, I'll always ask, where should we start today? I like to start the discussion with this question because it doesn't assume that the most important thing my teammate wants to talk about is something that they've added to our shared agenda. It can feel unnerving to put a big topic in writing on an agenda. It can also feel unnerving to reveal that topic ahead of time. Now, frequently, the topics that are going to be brought up during our one-on-one -on -one are going to focus on the project or the assignment that your team is working on. Now, whether positive or negative, you can use your one-on-one -on -one with each team member to triangulate how the team is doing overall. If everyone on your team is sharing different struggles and different concerns, that may point to communication with issues within your team. If everyone's sharing similar concerns, that may point to good communication, but that you may have a real problem to look into. I use the one-on-one -on -one to socialize and workshop ideas for solving problems, too. When having a discussion about a challenge that an individual or a team is facing, ask how they would approach solving that problem. If you, ha if you have ideas for it, ask them to poke holes in your ideas. When you're asking for input from your team, it's important that you avoid offering suggested answers. Give them space to answer honestly. Now, when I can sense excitement within, with, sorry, within an individual for working on a particular problem, I'll provide an opportunity for them to take ownership over that problem. When there are several people who share excitement for solving a problem, I'll suggest that they pair up to take on the challenge, and then I'll make sure that they have time to do that. This happens frequently at Reaction and often involves engineers from different teams and with different amounts of experience. The conversations that start in my one-on-ones and lead to cross-team problem solving between engineers can have impact on the entire organization and can provide career growth opportunities for everyone involved. Lastly, always follow up. Your team may not bring up an issue that they've brought up before just because it hasn't been resolved yet. If you've made a commitment of any kind, even if it was something just off the top of your head, know that your teammate is absolutely waiting for you to follow up, even if the update's just that you're still working on it. Be the kind of leader 
that does what you say you're going to do. If there's no follow-up, no accountability, and no next steps, you're not having a one-on-one. -on -one. You're just having a chat. Thank you.